After receiving their payment from Alexei, Aru leads Lucian, Donnie and Blossom off towards their camp to rejoin with the others. Over the top of the canopy of the Twisted Svalich Forest, the withered warlock can see the castle Ravenloft oppressively looming above, almost as if it was watching him. He produces a satisfied smirk before turning to his subordinates. We should visit the lord of these lands. Wouldn't hurt to appeal to the etiquette of invitation. It is only courteous. He turns his gaze towards the castle once more as the group continue their travels. Well, that's what'll happen, man. It'll hurt. Donnie stares at Lucian with apprehension. Seriously, from everything we know about Strahd, he is not exactly the beer-drinking type of dude. The wizard shudders. Ugh, oh, vampires. Do not judge a book by its critics. I believe you are simply just a yellow-bellied coward. And even if the rumors do prove true, and the Lord is in fact a fiend of the night, having a touch of darkness does not make one a monster. Lucian folds his arms assertively. We may even learn a thing or two from our host. The dark powers are elusive after all. Who better to ask than the master? Well, that whole dark power thing might be your mission, but our resident sleuth told me in exchange for my magical services, he will open old doors to new flavors. And so far, this land is lacking, so we can't all get what we want. The disgruntled turtle wrinkles his snout. My own affairs come second when adhering to the requests of aristocrats. There is a hierarchy for a reason, just like I am your better. We shall visit him. We shall have no choice not to. In my studies, Barovia is well known for its captives. So if you want to get out, who do you think is the prison warden? The warlock attempts to keep the castle in his vision. So what? We just waddle into a vampire lair and have dinner? No thanks. Madam Ava told me I have a destiny if I want to survive which I do, I'm going to follow her plan and find these relics. The turtle nods with determination. Pathetic. I make my own fate. Lucian huffs. I do not need some lowly mystical swamp hag to make my decisions, but ancient relics do sound intriguing. Will you guys keep up? Aru huffs, and they continue their walk. Damon rubs his neck from sleeping on the hard ground. He quickly jumps up and instinctively grabs towards his rapier when Aru bursts through the bushes. You miss me? Aru letting out an amused chuckle from behind gritted teeth. Damon's stunned expression falls into an embarrassed frown. I thought you were a bear, or worse. His blade is lowered. By the raven. By the state of your face, I'll say the job went smoothly. Damon assesses the bloody handprint while soothing his neck. So, uh, how's the coin? Ains interrupts. Donny passes the drow a coin to inspect. He bites nope, it, nope. feeling it bend under his teeth. Genuine gold. Nice. So these Vistani are worth our time. So, how did this happen? Damon rotates a pointed finger at Aru's face. We... we fixed the problem? Donny addresses the detective with fading confidence. Sort of. Ugh. And there it is. Please tell me the camp is still intact after your visit. Damon reaches for his cigarette. Mostly, Donny confesses. Damon rolls his eyes and perches the cigarette between his lips, allowing the turtle to continue. We had to decommission the well. The water was not fit for consumption. Donny raises his claw in his defense. We did them a favor. It was totally gross. And now they have a sweet mound of dirt instead, he encourages, trying to get Damon's approval. Boris a soup. Blah. Blossom grimaces. Ding ding people chance from Nana Water. Damon pats his coat, searching for his lighter. Ains offers him a burning hand with a mischievous smile. Raising a curious eyebrow, Damon accepts the offer to light his cigarette, while attempting to keep up with the narrative. More importantly, the wine is running out! Lucian exclaims while leaning on the log. Apparently these wizards who make it are slacking off or something. Forcing people to drink water! Can you imagine? It's a bloody outrage! No wonder they ended up corpsed! The warlock shakes his head. The detective takes a long drag and looks towards the paladin for a more coherent answer. Job done. Zambi dead. Well, dead dead. Aru points at her face. Present from Loth. 
So that's why the dead were more frequent. The Zerpool well explains the colourfully dressed zombies turning up in the village. Irina rubs her chin, analysing the unfolding mystery. At the Wizards of the Wine. Not like them to give up their passion so easily. I wonder what has happened to them. I'm glad someone is keeping up with this shambles of a conversation. The detective exhales smoke into the cool morning air. We'll look into the wizards at a later date. Looks like we are done here for now. Good work, team. Let's prioritize getting to Falaki. Indeed, Ismark offers a small bow of respect. We have another long day of travel. Now that it's light, we should get moving. Yes, light. Aru glances up at the grey sky, trying to remember the warmth of the sun. Damon claps with a lit cigarette in his mouth. Everyone, pack up. Oh, come on. I just sat down. Lucian grumbles. The party begins packing their supplies. Ismark shows Damon the map. When we get to Velaki, we should go to St. Andrew's Church as soon as possible. But for now, Ismark jabs his finger into the map. This is the old Svalich Road, the main route for travel and the safest way to the city. Ismark runs his finger along the old paper and has a sudden, solemn moment. What is it? Damon inquires. Apologies, it's just... When I was younger, father would tell me stories to lessen my childish impatience while we traveled this road. Tears build up in his Mark's eyes, but he wipes them away before they can escape and lets out a forced <laughs> chuckle. Old tales to entertain, I suppose. Anything of note? Damon gently encourages. I mean, your father seemed like a man of great knowledge. Perhaps he knew something that could aid us. Well, I always assumed they were just stories for a bored boy. But in light of these new revelations about the Devil Lord, I'm beginning to believe all the atrocities of his identically named predecessors were not in fact heirs, but the same man. That means he has ruled Barovia for over 400 years. 400? That would make him one of the oldest vampires in existence. Damon frowns with concern and rubs his stubble. Ha! He's a young sprout compared to some of us old-timers. Lucian abruptly remarks, pretending to contribute to the packing by folding and refolding his bedroll. Damon chooses to ignore the old man's rambling and pats Ismark on the back. The old Svalich road it is. Amongst the shadow of the twisted trees, thunder rumbles above. Damon cautiously walks ahead, scouring the trees that flank the dirt road with vigilance. A small clearing emerges, cradling an old rickety gallows. Silhouetted by the rolling mist, a rope creaks in the breeze, clinging to a limp corpse. Hmm. Seen a few good thieves end up in a place like this. Ain sighs and gives a salute with his fiery limb to his long-gone comrades. While I do not agree with the criminal lifestyle, this form of punishment is just cruel. Damon attempts to sympathize. Sorry for your loss. Such barbarism, but it's the Lord's law. Death to thieves, even the starving ones, so many innocents, so many friends. Irina turns away from the mm. hanging man into Damon's chest for comfort. He hesitantly holds Irina around the shoulders for a moment. Calm washes over him before he allows the feeling to take hold. He At clears his throat and separates himself from the lady, not wanting to get too familiar. Well, laws should favour the people, not their rulers. Perhaps we may find a solution. He optimistically states... Irina, surprised by Damon's sudden escape from her embrace, quickly accepts his decision with a disenchanted gaze towards the gallows. Hanging though, it's a bit excessive. I didn't choose to scrape the bottom of the barrel, even if I am pretty good at it. Ains has a sense of conflicted pride. One with adept skills like yours, Ains, needn't lower themselves. Damon compliments the drow. Huh. If you haven't noticed, Captain Creed, my type are not well received. Even the Underdark didn't want me. The only place where my face wasn't a problem was at the bottom of Dreary Lane, with the street rats and misfits. Ain sinks into the pits of repressed memories. I didn't lie myself. Society did. Damon solemnly pats the shrouded one on the shoulder, attempting to provide silent comfort. Ah, I don't need pity, boss. I'll give myself enough. You got me out of a jam with the constable who wanted my head in a basket and I'm grateful. Don't get me wrong. Just seeing this display has got me nogging on dark times. Think I need a moment, if you don't mind. Ains adjusts his hood and wanders to the edge of the road. If justice requires death, then be it with compassion and dignity, or we become criminals ourselves. 
Damon calls out before noticing below the gallows are a set of fresh graves. He leads the drow to his thoughts and inspects the piles of dirt, offering prayers to the Raven Queen. Meanwhile, Lucian stares at the gallows almost as if he is caught in a trance. He unknowingly begins to mimic the movement of the swaying body. A lightning flash reveals the details of the corpse's face and he sees himself hanging, glaring intensely with the same glassy eyes. The warlock scrunches his eyebrows out of curiosity and steps closer to inspect the body, observing its face closely where he once saw himself, now only to see a broken-necked Barovian. Lucian tilts his head, questioning what he saw. And she will make you witness your own death, he smiles, quoting an ancient tome to himself. Interesting. Mm. Donatello. Do me a favor and see if you can spot someone responsible for these graves. They seem rather recent. I'd like to give them a piece of my mind. Damon scowls and pans over the graves again with melancholy. Sure thing, Mr. Boss. Donny complies and sends out his owl above the surrounding area. All seems clear when suddenly he spots a black carriage with white horses racing along the forest road towards the location. Ah, uh, that hell carriage is heading this way at full speed. Donny gestures into the general direction. Blossom immediately squeals with fear and dives into the nearest bush. Damon crouches behind a tree and gestures to the nobles to join him. Everybody, hide! Irina grabs her brother's arm and drags him into the shrubs near the detective. Aru growls, camouflaging amongst the foliage, her yellow eyes glowing through the dull green. Ain slinks behind a tree and shouts to Donny, Get out the bloody road, you muppet! Donny, however, plants his feet into the damp soil. Don't worry, I got a plan. Lucian casually leans on a tree in the open, watching with mild amusement as the reptilian wizard stands in a bent squat in the center of the road. Looks like we're having seafood for dinner. He laughs full-heartedly to himself. The carriage rushes down the track, its horses charging, their eyes alight with flames. And yep. Donny flings out his arms with a mighty cry and a mound of earth rises up to form a wall in front of him. The carriage driver pulls hard on the reins, trying to steer past the barrier, but slides and crashes hard, causing a wheel to fly off, barely missing Blossom's head. The turtle becomes surrounded by a cloud of dust. There is a quiet as the sprinkling of the dirt settles. When the driver's boots impact the ground, steady footsteps approach, and so does the sound of sorrowful wails. A displeased Rahadin glares down at the wizard. Donny's eyes slowly meet him. The wizard uncomfortably gulps with the looming pale elf, who growls, raising his arm in anticipation to offer a disciplinary slap. What do you think you are doing? He huffs and controls himself, lowering his hand. What am I doing? Donny improvises, gesturing wildly towards the finely dressed man. My life was in danger. You come speeding round the corner, not looking where you're going. What did you expect me to do? Donny gives the detective a hardened stare and using a flick of his eyes, he instructs them to make their escape. Damon and Aru take the nobles deeper into the forest. Why were you standing in the middle of the road in the first place? Rahadin hisses. Dude, I'm a turtle. Takes me a while to cross over. I'm naturally slow. I can't help it. Donny scoffs, trying to act offended. You're the one who should be careful. People walk here, you know. Lucian chuckles, watching the exchange. My master owns these roads. His carriage drives however he pleases. The pale elf grits his teeth. Dude, seriously, I'm a guest here. Donny stomps his foot. How would he feel if you ran over his guest? How would he feel knowing you damaged his carriage? Rahadin stomps his foot in retort. Tell him, see if I care. Donny folding his arms. He shall hear of this. The butler growls. Oh yeah? Donny continues to antagonize. Oh yes, and how you endangered his beloved bride, Ludmilla, Queen of Barovia. The butler gestures to the carriage and an angry young woman with purple hair steps out from the other side. Her eyes locked on Donny, and a trickle of blood escapes her forehead. Without removing her gaze, she wipes her fingers over the wound and licks the blood, before confidently striding over. You ruined my dress, she growls. It is filthy. You will pay. The question is, will it be in gold or blood? 
The corner of her mouth rises into a half-smile, revealing a sharp canine. Donnie oh. gulps hard and produces a nervous smile. Uh, depends how much gold you want. The youthful woman sighs <laughs> disappointedly and rolls her eyes. Empty your pockets. Donnie rapidly dives into his shell. His head slowly emerges. Uh, seems I'm a little short. Indeed you are. Rahadin cunningly smirks. Lucian catches Damon staring at him with disapproval through the distant shrubs as he slowly wanders away. The warlock rolls his eyes and he glides over to the young woman. Excuse me, your majesty. Perhaps this genuine pocket sand will suffice. He presents the small sack with a respectful bow. Pathetic little tricks. The whites of Ludmilla's eyes are consumed with crimson. You think I am stupid? She bares her sharp teeth. The warlock raises his eyebrow in merriment and intrigue. Ah, I'm sure someone civilized like yourself needn't lessen themselves to violent urges. Now, now, this swamp rat ruined my dress, destroyed my carriage, insulted my butler. The least he can do is buy me lunch. She takes a swift step towards the wizard. Blossom and Ains give each other a firm and knowing sure. nod, but that nod to Ains meant, let's fight. Blossom, it meant, do you want God? Tick, tick. No hurt, total man. Please, please. He whimpers. Ah, oh, come on, mate. Don't give over the goods so easily. Ains pouts whilst holding his rapier. More food hiding in the forest. She <sighs> snarls. What could you possibly be doing out here? Blossom quickly runs with the first lie which pops into his little pink head. Uh, we look for Ivina? Ains and Donnie glare at the small one in disbelief. Ludmilla turns to the cheerful masked munchkin. Her eyes soften back to their original colour. Keep your coin and your lives. I want something else. The tiny marshmallow pensively removes a utensil from his cloak and softly cries. Fine. You'll take the spoon. Ah, keep your dirty cutlery. The woman waves her hand, rejecting the offer. I want Irina. The detective rushes through the dense forest, guiding their escape. He regularly glances over his shoulder, ensuring they are not being followed. Irina and Ismark jog in the middle, and a rue behind. Suddenly, the forest parts, and the clouded skies can be seen once more. Damon slows to get his bearings. He spins around, looking for the castle on its high ridge, when Irina softly whispers, Damon. He swiftly brings his attention to the direction of her pointed finger. On the far end of the field, twisted creatures wander aimlessly, their bodies resembling slender trees. Twig blights! The rogue exclaims under his breath, scanning the area for an escape route. He notices a shallow river. There! Go! Aru makes her way over to the water and attempts to cross, but her heavy feet slip on the wet rocks and splash! She draws the attention of the foes. A wall of thick and tangled thorns erupts from the ground along the waterline, capturing the orc. Damon sees a figure dressed in leaves and furs. The distant form holds up a glowing wand. Yoo-hoo! It shouts from afar and twiddles its fingers at the party, and then sprints like a determined predator toward them. Despite Ismark being fear-struck, he automatically stands in front of his sister to protect her. The Horned One stops perfectly an inch from Ismark's nose with a fixed grin and sniffs at the air around the stunned noble. Oh, you smell expensive. Baba would like you. He cackles and twitches the wand, causing the twig blights to draw closer. Irina clenches her fist, arcane energy surges, and she slams it against her chest, her skin becoming coated in a thick bark-like shield. <laughs> one of us, one of us. The manic deer person chants and claps with excitement, bouncing on their heels. Wood-faced Irina pulls her longsword from her belt and rushes towards one of the tree monsters, which scratches against her bark armor, leaving her untouched. She swings and manages to chop at the creature's tangled limbs and the branches fall into the grass. Damon rushes in defense of the nobles, his short bow drawn. He fires a shot mid-sprint at the dancing foe hitting him perfectly in the neck. Ismark screams in fear and allows the adrenaline to carry him. He slices at the opposite walking tree, but it still lashes out in return, causing a long cut on his face. The noble shrieks, clutching the wound. Irina pushes her brother aside and with a pained cry hacks at the sprite until it becomes lifeless kindling. Damon approaches the dear man, who is gargling blood, 
clutching at the arrow in his neck, but still smiling brightly. Bubba, I'd like you to... He laughs maniacally before tearing the arrow out from his own throat, allowing himself to bleed out on the dirt with a wide red stained grin staring at Damon. The detective gives a curious eyebrow towards the nobles. Who is this? Who is Baba? Should we be worried? The forest people are known to suffer all manner of delusions, Irene states softly. I wouldn't place too much stock in their words, but that being said, he was probably a scout. Damon searches the body and finds the decorated wand. He can sense vague magic emanating from it. This must have commanded the plants, it seems. He also discovers a note which states, Meet BL at Yester Hill. He quietly puts the items into his coat. The thorns that captured a roo suddenly wither into ash. She walks towards the others. Oh, it stings. Ismark whines, covering his cheek. Aru gives him a firm slap on the forehead, and a red glow knits his wound together. This is not right. There's only so much healing I can do, and Doombringer knows what else is out here. She assertively states, I know. Something tells me this was just a taste. We're lucky it was just a scratch. Damon uncomfortably looks over the nobles. We must return to the road quickly. Ismark voices, poking at his healed cheek. There will be more soon. I do hope the others are safe. Irina's bark skin shimmers away with thoughts of worry. Damon bends down to the smiling deer man and closes his eyelids. Ride the raven's wing. May the lady take you where you deserve. Let's get back. So you are looking for her as well? Ludmilla frowns. Hmm. Why would a nobleman's daughter matter to outsiders? Ah, uh, we need a big coin. Blossom opens out his arms for emphasis. Vistani, no help. He pouts. Hmm, well there is your problem. The Vistani only do things if they are getting paid. And even then, they wouldn't give up the bounty for someone like her. Ludmilla grumbles. I want to make you a deal. You seem to be far more capable and coherent than those vagabonds. If you should find that red-headed harlot, bring her to me. And I will reward you greatly. The queen produces a forced smile. Blossom silently consults his companions. Ains raises an eyebrow in consideration, slowly nods, agreeing to the idea of money. Donny shakes his head slowly and mouths, run away. And Lucian either winks or is falling asleep. The small diplomat turns his attention back to Ludmilla. Castleman has Bitcoin. Why not Arena for him? Ludmilla's smile sours. I know my husband is offering a pointlessly large reward for a pointlessly stunted mortal. But I will give you something even greater. Bring her to me, and only me, understand? And my husband should know nothing of this. Rahadin <sighs> groans with dissent. He folds his arms and walks off towards the carriage, purposefully excluding himself from any traitorous talk. Okay, scary lady. Blossom effortlessly lies. Blossom say yes. And if you should break our little arrangement, I will make sure you experience what life is like without skin. She grits her sharp fangs. Do you understand? Oh no, Blossom likes skin. He shakes slightly in fear. Ludmilla grins with delight. Wonderful. Then we have an accord. <laughs>